Hey guys, I'm Bren from AEM, and today we're going to talk all about track maps. We're going to be going into some details here, so if you just have some questions, you can leave them in the comments below, or you can jump around these timestamps that are down below. Without further ado, let's do it. Alright, let's go ahead and open up AEM data here. You'll see that we have a project behind our quick start menu here, but let's go ahead and start a full new one. Just a new, empty project. Once you get to this position, you can go ahead and open up any of the log files that you want to make a track map of. We're going to go ahead and go with this Gingerman lap right here. We'll exit out of the quick start, and then here we are. I'm going to throw on vehicle speed right here. Now that we've got a channel in there, let's go ahead and make some room for our track map. I'll drag this down, drag the trace over, make it look a bit nice here. And then, once you want to add the track map, you can go ahead and right click right here, go to add view, and then go all the way down to track. You can put this track map anywhere, you can even create a new tab for it, but this is just what I think looks nice. Go ahead and expand this a bit. You'll see that it says invalid log source, and that just means that it hasn't been set up yet. It's not sure what data to look for for the track. So let's go ahead and set up the track. Click on set up track there. Now you can see that it's already created a track map for me. If you're not seeing this, go over to these three channels right here and make sure it says GPSI latitude, GPSI longitude, and then for the last one, we'll make sure that the GPS valid channel is correctly placed. So if you're not seeing anything, make sure that these three channels are right, and if they're not, make sure to just manually place them in. Super easy to do if it's not already set up for you. If you think these track lines are too thick, for example, you can head down here to the width and edit them a bit. Once you click calculate, it should change. And there it is, way thinner. Or if you want it to be way thicker, you can do that too. You can also change the rotation of it if you want. Just click calculate, and there you go. You can have it set in whatever position you want. You can also create segments to break down the track into turns and straights. It's super easy. If you just click on segments right here, and then come up here to the calculator button, it'll automatically generate your straights and your turns, just like that. Auto calculating these is definitely the easiest way to go. Even when you auto calculate them, you can still edit them right here with these buttons. You can change the segment size, the turn radius, the window size, the step size. Once these are all changed to your liking, you can go ahead and just click OK. Now you can see it has names for all of the turns and straights, it has their distances, it has their types, whether it's left or right. Once you've seen all this, you can go ahead and click OK. You can also change what lap you want to take a look at. Right now we're taking a look at lap number three, but say you want to switch it down to lap number one because that was your fastest time. You can go ahead and do that. We'll stick on lap three, and then we'll make a name for our track map. Once you've done all this, you can go ahead and click OK. But now we need to set our start and finish line so we can create some lap times here. If you don't know where the start and finish line on your track are, you're going to want to go ahead and find a track map online of wherever you are racing. For example, this run that we're looking at right now was taken at Gingerman Raceway. You can see exactly where the start and finish line is. Now that we know where our start and finish line is, let's go down here and make sure that we are right where we need to be. If you want to get more precise, you can use the scroll wheel or the plus and minus keys to zoom in and make sure you're getting exactly where your start and finish line is which for us is right here. Once you've got your exact positioning, you can right click on the line here on the trace, then go to GPS lap beacons, and then add beacon at cursor lap. You can even go so far as to splitting up turns and naming those turns with the add beacon at cursor split button right here. Now, once we click this lap button, you'll see on our track map, this green icon pops up where our start and finish line is. Then go ahead and make sure that your log source, latitude, and longitude channels are correct here. This is our log source, and this is our latitude channel, and this is our longitude channel. So all's good. You can also set the range of the beacon, which is that green icon mentioned. I'm going to set it a little bit lower to around 30 for a bit more exact lap time. You can also set the timing window, which only allows a lap to be counted if it exceeds this amount of time. So for example, if you had this set on 10,000 seconds, that's way too much. So we can bring it down to like 60 seconds. Then we'll go ahead and generate our markers here. Quick note here, your screen might not look exactly like mine. You can kind of already see the laps here. That's just because I was running some tests before that. But if you follow what I'm doing, you should be totally fine. Then we'll click on the generate markers. I've already done this before as a test to make sure everything works. So this will pop up for me. It might not pop up for you though. Then we'll go ahead and close this. Now, if you want to see your lap times and it's actually not already on your layout, you can go over here to View up top, and then go to Project Explorer, or just click Alt F7. 
and then this will pop up on your left. Now you've got your lap times right here. Now you may notice that if I zoom out here with the scroll wheel, a lot of data is grayed out. That's because this black area right here, not the gray areas, is our lap number three. You can see up here on top. If we say wanted to look at lap number two, we can head over here to lap two, right click it, and then set it as the main layer. Now it's zoomed in, but if you zoom back out, we're now looking at lap number two. If you want an easy way to tell when one lap ends and when one lap starts, you can see these red dotted lines here, kind of zoom in on them a bit. You can also just drag the test track right here. These dotted lines are the end of lap two, for example, and the start of lap three. If you also just say want to go to turn two, you can just come up here, click on turn two, brings you right there. Basically, the track map really helps you isolate every single little bit of your run so you can perfect every turn, every straight, every lap. Now, if you want more detail, let me show you time reports and channel reports. But to do that, let's create a new tab real quick. We'll right click up here, click on new tab, give it a new name. You can even pick an icon for it if you want. You can also even install your own, but I'll go with this one for right now. Go ahead and click OK. Now let's go ahead and right click, go to add view, and then go to report time. Let me go ahead and make this look a little bit neat to explain it. Now what you're seeing right here is all three of our laps in each one of the individual times that it went through every straight or turn. Now you'll see that some of them have some green on them. That is because it's the best time out of the three laps. So for example, we'll say straight number six here, our first lap we got 4.2 seconds, our second lap we got four seconds, and our third lap we got 4.1 seconds. Now our second lap was the fastest, so naturally it's green. Now something that's really cool is if you pull this up here and you click show composite fastest, we'll see a fourth lap drop down. You'll notice that this one's all green. That's because it's made out of every single fastest time in every straight and every turn. So in theory, it is the best possible time that we could have gotten if we hit our best time on every straight and every turn. Now hitting your best time on every straight and turn may be a bit over optimistic, so you can also do show rolling fastest. We can click on that and a fifth line will pop up at the bottom. Rolling fastest represents a more realistic view. It's more like the lap timing beacon has been moved to a point where the fastest continuous lap really started. The segments that are picked by the rolling fastest calculation have the orange flanks on their cells. This can all be a bit complicated, but if you want to take anything from this time report, just know that you have the ability to see your fastest possible time and your fastest, most realistic possible time. That's of course before you really start to improve. Time reports and channel reports could have a whole video dedicated to them, but this is just a simple, quick overview. Right now, let's get into channel reports. Let's go ahead and right click, go to add view, and then go down to report channels. We'll go ahead and click on that and then you'll see this pop up. Channel reports are actually pretty similar to time reports. So time reports can check your best time on every straight or turn. For channel reports, you can say input a channel like vehicle speed, and then you can see your best speed for every straight and turn. First thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is add a channel into here. You can go ahead and go to this green icon right here for add. We'll click on that and then let's say, let's throw in vehicle speed. Now let's go ahead and click OK here before we start editing some stuff. So you can see this is our data on vehicle speed. You can see it's set into three different laps here, one, two, three. And you can see that we have our minimum value, our max value, our average or mean value. We have our standard deviation. We have our speed that we started at the start of the lap. We have the speed that we ended with at the end of the lap. We have the change in value from the start to the ending. And we have our time delta, which is basically just the time of the lap. This is all pretty cool, but I want to get more specific. Let's head up here to the gear icon, and then let's change our range from the laps to the corners. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. Now this just got pretty big, so we might not be able to see the whole thing here. But now you can see all of this data for every single turn. This is already super useful, and there's a lot to explain here, but say you wanted to get more specific. If you wanted to add the straights to here too, you can go back to the gear icon. Instead of corners, you can set this to segment times. We'll go ahead and click OK, and then now you can see everything's been changed. There is a ton of data here, and there's a ton of stuff that you can do to work with it. You can see almost anything about every single turn, every straight, every lap. If you have any questions about any of this, you can always ask in the comments below and we'll help you out. Or you can actually head up here to the help icon, go to help, and then this big encyclopedia will pop up. If you want to say, learn more about time reports, 
you can go ahead and type that in, head down to report time, and it will tell you everything that you need to know. You can even learn more about our channel reports up here too. There's even more that we could get into, but this video is just about track maps and it's already getting pretty lengthy. If you have any questions about track maps or really anything else, make sure to let us know in the comments down below and we'll help you out. Also, if you liked the video, make sure to hit like and subscribe. I'm Bren, and I'll see you next week.